Hi there, thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I've been meaning to do a video for quite some time now about um, my fertility journey and it and I just decided today's the day to do it. I wanted to take a moment to just share my fertility story in case it may provide hope to somebody else that's currently going through um, experiencing infertility or having trouble conceiving. I I am just going to share that I am pregnant now while I'm filming this video, but I became pregnant despite the outlook being very, very poor. So I just wanted to share what my circumstance was in case it may provide hope to somebody else that's having a hard time as well. I am currently 39 years old, so I'm um, advanced maternal age. I started trying to conceive when I was 38, so I just want to recognize right from the start that my uh, journey with trying to conceive was short, much shorter compared to many other people's journeys. And I have the utmost respect and admiration for people who have been trying to conceive for years. And um, I realize that I'm lucky, that I, I'm very lucky because my journey has been short in comparison to others. But I am 39 years old right now, and I, I conceived when I was 38. Uh, my husband and I got married in April of 2020, and we started trying to conceive right away because I, I, re I realize my age, and I know that um, your fertility declines significantly in your 30s, so I wanted to, we wanted to try right away. So I took a suggestion from somebody to go see a fertility doctor right away. The recommendation for somebody over 35 is to try to conceive for six months, and then if you have trouble, to make an appointment with a a fertility doctor but we made a fertility an appointment right away just that way we can find out if there were any potential issues with trying to conceive we can find out sooner rather than later so I made an appointment with a, a big clinic and we went we started going through an entire battery of tests and so the whole process took a couple of months before we can finally uh, meet with the doctor and go through the results the battery of tests included blood work, it included a transvaginal ultrasound, it included um, my, my, my husband they had to submit a sample of his semen, he also had to have blood work, we did genetic testing, so it was an extensive battery. I had something called an HSG test, which if you're going through your own fertility journey right now, you, you probably know what that is, but it's basically a contrast uh, x-ray of your uterus to be able to see if there's any blockages or uh, cysts or fibroids or any physical characteristics that might get in the way of, of being able to conceive. And so we had this entire battery of tests and ultimately in July of 2020 we were able to come together, sit with the doctor and go over the results. And on that day I, I really didn't know what to expect, and I, I guess I should have expected that, you know, tr conceiving wouldn't be the easiest considering my age, but the results that we received were very, very shocking to me. So I'm looking down because I'm looking at, at some notes in case you're wondering why I'm looking down. But basically, on that day, the doctor, with all the information that was collected, concluded that it was going to be very, very difficult and very unlikely for me able to conceive on my own. Of course, no doctor can tell you that you're never going to be able to conceive, but he said the chances for me of us being able to conceive on our own would be very, very unlikely. And the reason why is because I had severely diminished ovarian reserve. Um, he also mentioned imminent premature ovarian failure, so by all by all measures, I looked like somebody that was in menopause, basically, at 38 years old at the time. And if it wasn't for me actually getting a period, I was still getting a period at that time, although my cycle wasn't regular. That was the only reason I wasn't diagnosed as being a person in menopause. Because otherwise, my follicle-stimulating hormone, my FSH level, was very, very high. And that's a a number that you want to be low. It should be below 10, for example. And my FSH level, or follicle stimulating hormone, was a 45.6. Also, my AMH level, anti-malarian hormone, level was very, very, very low. 
and that's a number that you want to be a, a little bit higher. I forget exactly what the, the good range is for that hormone level, but my level was 0 0.03. So it was bottomed out pretty much. And then the third test that they, that they look at to be able to evaluate ovarian reserve is the transvaginal ultrasound. They, they look for the number of follicles that can be observed on each ovary, and the doctor was able to detect none. So my FSH level combined with my AMH level combined with my antral follicle count, or the number of follicles observed on my ovaries, based on those three assessments, the outlook for me getting pregnant on my own was extremely, extremely unlikely. So the doctor began giving us his recommendation, which was donor IVF. So he concluded that the best chance of me getting pregnant was to use a, don a donated egg. So purchase a donated and purchase eggs from a donor, and then we could do in vitro fertilization where the donor's egg plus my husband's sperm um, in vitro fertilization could be used to make an ed embryo, and then that can be embryo can be transferred into me to, to carry. So needless to say, I my husband and I were completely devastated at that point because at that time we were very uneducated about fertility and I never expected to hear that, that the only option would be donor egg IVF. So we were very devastated and after the initial shock began exploring options. One being donor egg IVF, we, look, we looked into that, put some more thought into that, and we also put some thought into adoption. And really those were the main two options that we put, some, put any serious thought into. And we decided that we were gonna pursue adoption, so that was the route that felt most comfortable, and we started working with an adoption consultant and going that route. I took my husband's recommendation to go to get a second opinion from another reproductive en endocrinologist just anyway because it's such a that's such a significant um, prognosis for us that it's worth a second opinion. So we did make an appointment with another reproductive endocrinologist and based on my records that were sent over the new doctor agreed with the previous doctor's impression except for she was more open to alternative treatments as well. She had a, a more holistic mindset, and she said though she agreed with his assessment based on the records that she reviewed, she suggested a couple of things that we could try, one being acupuncture. So I started going to acupuncture once a week, you know, every week religiously. I started taking two supplements, one being DHEA, and another supplement being, it's something called Fertile One, and the brand is Coast Science, so just another good supplement. Uh, I tried to pay more attention to my diet. I've always ate pretty healthy, but I tried to really be not perfect, but cognizant of eating fresh foods, fruits, vegetables, limiting packaged foods, and just eating an overall healthy, clean diet. My doctor recommended that I limit my use of plastics, so I switched out my plastic Tupperware for glass Tupperware. I started drinking out of a bottle. My bottled water was from containers that either weren't plastic or were BPA-free, and we got a water filtration uh, system called Alexa Pure. So I wasn't, again, I, mean, I never went crazy. I wasn't perfect, but I just tried to take some of these suggestions, and also this was a difficult time emotionally, so I did the best that I could, but I wasn't 100% perfect. In addition to making those lifestyle changes, we did um, we had we did several cycles of treatment with the reproductive endocrinologist, not IVF because again she could agree that I wasn't a good candidate for IVF um, because she also she didn't redo my blood work my AMH and FSH, but she did do her own transvaginal ultrasound. And she was able to detect um, like really two follicles at the most, but it turns out that one of those, what seemed like a follicle, was more just a cyst. So 
really, uh, all in all, I never had more than one follicle be observed on a transvaginal ultrasound. So she also agreed that IVF wasn't a good option for me because by all, um, by all measures that, that could be seen, it didn't seem that I, I would be able to produce a good number of eggs in a retrieval. So it just wouldn't be worth the expense and the, you know, the medication and the procedure and all of that. So we tried lower level, low cost um, treatment options. The treatment option that we did was we did ovulation induction using a medication called letrozole. And I took, I did two cycles of letrozole. So I would take the medication and we would do ultrasounds to see if it was helping um, produce, helping my ovaries make more follicles. And I had an odd response to the letrozole. It didn't really do what it was supposed to do for me. It didn't help me produce more follicles. And instead, it just made my FSH level shoot sky high. So it was a 45.6. And then after my second cycle of letrozole, we measured my FSH again, and it was over 100. So I wasn't, I had an odd response, the doctor said, to the letrozole. So we tried two cycles of that, and we were going to try a third, but, but before trying that cycle, new cycle of letrozole, we were going to take a break, a break for about a month, and then my doctor was going to have me take birth control for a period of time before trying the letrozole, or, or actually she wasn't going to, we weren't even going to do letrozole again, but before trying another medication to help stimulate my ovaries. I was going to take birth control just to reset and give my ovaries a rest. Well, we needed a break anyway, so that was a good, good timing because needless to say, even though we haven't been struggling with fertility for years, just hearing about this, these, this FSH level, AMH level, barely any follicles, and I wasn't even responding to the letrozole, I didn't have a lot of hope at that time. So I was happy to take a break. During the break, we, when we weren't taking any medication, we hadn't tried the birth control yet, my husband and I still, we still stuck with the supplements, we still stuck with the acupuncture, still tried as best as possible to have a decent diet and limit plastics, but we also tried to, um, we had intercourse every other day for the month that we were taking a break, break from treatment, but we were certainly working hard um, because we just figured my ovulation, if it happens, seems to be pretty unpredictable. So let's just try, let's just try it every other day and see what happens. And the, that, that month that we tried that, we conceived. So the reason why I wanted to share this video is not to give false hope. I don't want anybody to think that, you know, oh, if you try acupuncture and supplements and you limit plastics and you clean up your diet and you, you try to conceive every other day that that's going to work. I don't, I don't want to give false hope. I just know that when I was feeling very low, I looked a lot on YouTube to try to find stories from other women who had very high FSH, very low AMH, and... Um, and low antral follicle count and I wanted to hear stories where people actually conceived under those circumstances and I didn't find any and so I just want to I just wanted to share this video just so somebody knows that it's not guaranteed but it's possible you know it is possible not guaranteed but at 38 years old, with an extremely high FSH level, extremely low AMH level, barely any follicles, one at most, and two fertility, two reproductive endocrinologists saying that it would be very unlikely to conceive it happened. So I'm not sure where you are in your journey, but don't give up, don't give up hope, and nothing's guaranteed, but there are people out there that um, also have received very poor, a poor prognosis when it comes to conceiving. And despite that, miracles still happen.
Thank you for watching this video, and I hope it gave hope to at least one person. Thank you.